recall what was covered in 4.4 about writing equations in slope intercept form. Notice that you need to have specifically the y intercepts and the slope in order for you to put it in what we call the slope intercept form. I just kind of do a quick review here with you of the slope intercept form. Now notice the slope intercept form will have your dependent variable by itself and the slope times an independent, so m times x plus b. m is your slope, as you can see, and b is your y-intercept. You need to have these two in order for you to put it as a slope-intercept form. Now, what I'm trying to teach you today, and the outcome of this lesson, like I said, is to be able to allow you to pick any point, not just the y-intercept, any point on the line uh, with the slope, and be able to write it as an equation to describe your line. Okay, so any point and one slope will give you an equation for that particular line. So let me just introduce you the point slope form. Here we go. It's slightly different. Um, it's x minus, sorry, x minus x1. Let me just kind of redo that, uh, undo this. Or let's rewrite this all together, make sure you have the complete one. Okay, there you go. Let's box that one. Let's cross this one out. So where am I going to get the x1, y1 from? Remember, x1, y1 is that one point, any point on the line that I want you to find. And of course, I need the slope as well. So as long as you have a slope and a point, you will be put in back into the point slope format. And the beauty of the point slope format is you can always convert it back to the slope intercept format by solving for y. Okay, so this is very versatile. You can use it to get your equation. So let's just take a look here at our first example. Pretend I already give you a slope of negative 2, and I give you a specific point for this line. So this is a negative 2 and 5, okay? If I was to graph this, I just want to quickly uh, show you. Negative 2, 5 is right here. And remember, from a past lesson, we use a point and slope to get to the second point to, to get a line, right? So this slope is negative 2 over 1 because we can always convert it back to a fraction. That means I'm going to go, it's rise over run, just to remind you, rise over run. So since it's a negative, I'm going to go down 2 and run positive, so 1 over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to go down 2, 1 over. Here's my second point. I can quickly have this line. So now... I want an equation to describe this line. How am I going to do that? I can certainly quickly use your point slope form. Okay. In the past, if you were to use the slope intercept, you would need to find the intercepts. And then, of course, since you already have the slope, you can put it back into the slope intercept format. But here, since I'm using the point slope form, I don't really care as long as I have a point um, and a slope to use. So in this case, I already have a point given. I can just quickly plug it in. So this is x1, this is y1. Here's my slope of negative 2. I will substitute y1 here of 5. And my slope is a negative 2. My x minus x1, which is negative 2. Be careful about the double negative. This negative 2 is not the same thing as that. So it is minus a negative 2. Okay. So there you go. So let's clean it up a little bit here. Negative 2 times x plus 2. Now this right here is what we call the point slope form. Now if you solve it further, like I said, if you solve for y, it will now become a slope in a set format. Let me show you uh, how that works. So you want to solve for y, you would add the 5 over. So that means it will be like this. Okay, and you, of course you can quickly simplify that. y now equals 2, negative 2x plus 1, and guess what? That is your slope, and this is your y-intercept. And uh, this is not a surprise right there. Notice my graph. That's very accurate, isn't it? That it is indeed crossing over at, um, you know, 1 on the y-axis because that's your y-intercepts. So as you can see, it is very useful. I can quickly get an equation by taking one slope 
uh, taking the slope and a point. Plug it into the point solve form, solve for it, um, and then you know put back into the slope intercept if I ask you to. So here's another example here. And instead of giving you a slope this time, I gave you two points instead. It's asking you to find the slope, I mean the equation of that particular line. So let's say I have negative 2, 4, and I have 5, 6. Okay, let's do a quick graph here. I have 2 to the left and 4 up. There you go. And I have 5 to the right and 6 up. It's right here. So visually, you see that this is a positive chain, so you expect to have a positive slope, right? I need an equation for this particular line. I don't have a slope yet, but don't we know how to solve the slope, giving two points? We can set up ver vertically, so I can just quickly write this to find a slope. Here we go. Negative 2, 4. I have 5, 6. Let's set this up vertically and then start subtracting. Negative 2 minus 5, negative 7, 4 minus 6 negative 2, this is y, and this is x, so the slope is rise over run, y over x, so my slope is negative 2 over negative 7, or 2 seven. right, okay, I got my slope, and notice that I have more than what I need, I just need one point to use, so I can pick any one I want, and I will be able to get the same exact answer, believe it or not, if you can certainly try, but here's my point slope form that I'm going to use. Okay, so let's say I pick 5, 6. Then I'm going to plug, plug in 6 for y1. I'm going to use my slope of 2, 7, x minus x1, which is 5. Okay, right here, guys, is the point slope form. Okay, now if I want to put back into the slope intercept form, don't forget we have to solve for y, right? So it's, let's move it over. So that means it's going to be 2 7 times x minus 5 right here, um, plus 6. I can simplify it more. So that's going to be 2 7 x minus 10 7 plus 6. I'm not quite done yet because I still have this. So I'm just going to pull this aside to help you with the fraction here. Negative 10 over 7 plus 6 over 1. Your common denominator here would be 7, right? So negative 10 stays the same. This one is going to be 42 because 6 times 7 is 42. Simplify to uh, 32 over 7. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that. y equals to 2 7 x plus 32 over 7. This here, guys, is what we call the slope intercept. Now, while we're at it, I'd like to review with you the standard form. Many of you have forgotten this already, so I figure, you know what, I think it's important enough to show you again. But remember the standard form is this. Remember, and the A, their A, B, C are all integers, right? And A cannot, the A has to be bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. So the first thing we'll do is, since they're integers, we cannot have fractions. So let's take a look at this. You've got y equal to 2 7 x plus 32 over 7. We got fraction. We got a cleared fraction. Well, guess what? We can just multiply the whole thing by its common denominator, 7. So it's going to be 7y equals 2x plus 32, right? Now, since the standard form requires to have a... Um, the x and the y on the same side, so I'm going to move the 2x over right there. That will give us negative 2x plus 7y equals to 32, but since I cannot have a, which is the um, coefficient in front of the variable x, as a negative, I have to change it back to a positive by multiplying the whole thing by negative 1. That will turn it to a positive 2x minus 7y equals to negative 32. So now here, guys, is what we call our standard form. Well, if I can spell it correctly, <laughs> standard form. Okay, so there you have it. I give you all three forms, starting with the point slope form, change it to slope intercept, and end up with the standard form.
I'd like you to work on these probably before you come back to class the next day. This is in your workbook, page 55 and 56. So start with number 2. I'd like you to move on to number 9. This is on page 55, by the way. And then your number 11. So this, these three come from page 55. On the next page, page 56, I'd like you to work on, let's see if I can find out here. Oh yeah, here we go. I'd like you to work on number five and number 12. Okay, so these two problems will come from page 56 of your workbook, by the way. Okay, so if you don't know where to find these problems, they are in your workbook. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good luck.